All right, so let's go ahead and continue with our boot here. Um, one thing that I noticed that I did forget to mention was when you do the stitches, so let's do this. By default, the brush is pressure sensitive. If you're using a, a, uh, a tablet pen, the brush is pressure sensitive. So you can see as I press lightly and I start to get heavier, the stitches get bigger. So obviously this is not going to be good because it's going to be hard to maintain a consistent stitch size. So what you want to do is make sure that your minimum size on your on your uh, brush here is set to 100. And now no matter how softly or hard you press, it's just going to be the same size. I should have mentioned that earlier. Apologize for that, but that is, if you're having that issue, you just set your minimum size to 100 and then it'll always be uh, even the whole time. Okay. So just looking at this, what we have here, I did go in and just add some scratches uh, and I sort of wore down some of this leather here. I'll show you how I did that real fast. Um, I use like alphas. So if I grab an alpha right here and I know actually, you know what? I think I use brushes is what I used. Okay. So there's, there's all kinds of different brushes in here that you can experiment experiment with i think i use the chalk thin and let's enlarge that that's what it looks like then of course same thing here i turned on follow path so now by default you can see that it's got weird jittering going on there so just turn all these off angle size flow etc etc turn off all that jittering and now we have that. Let's see if we can make it better. Let's get rid of, well, let's put, let's see if I get rid of, now that makes it, let's put my, where did it go? So let's try that again here. Uh, okay, so let's get turn follow path on. And I think I turned this and forgive this. This is because I'm using a tablet. So 90, I put a 90 in there. Let's turn all this off here. And there we go. Now you can you can go ahead and, and throw some scratches on there. Um, if you don't want it to be so heavy, you can turn down the stroke opacity. And you can put in your scratches as, as needed. Okay, so just a quick way to throw some scratches in there. However you like. Um, now I'm doing this on the stitching level so i guess it doesn't really matter you can there's different places you can do it but i did i just did it on the stitching level um so that works for that then just to wear down some of this leather here i use the bark brush and you can see if you bring down your stroke opacity you can start to wear away at the leather real slowly okay so that that also implies a lot of wear okay so i wanted to put some of that in there in some of these places like right here so that it's not this perfectly nice dark leather i mean the shoe's been through a lot so you expect it to have quite a bit of, of just just general wear going on there uh you know maybe a little bit up here as well just just to break up some of that dark color maybe a little bit here and I use the low stroke opacity just so that I'm not doing a lot at once if I need more I could just go over it multiple times and I think that'll look good okay so anything we can do to weather it down is good now next thing what I want to do I want to adjust the cloth sections here um, just make it more interesting. So what I thought I'm going to do is, let me find it here. Uh, da, 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 let's see. And I want to use a multicam black texture. So I have this tiff right here. And I'm going to throw that in the fill layer. 
So the way I'm going to do that, uh, so let's let's close this down here. Close down there and open up the cloth one. I'm going to close this one up here. Uh, no, there we go. So obviously it can become kind of cluttered in there. So having those folders is really nice. So I'm going to click on, say, down here and put the put a fill layer in there. So that black stuff you see is this layer right here. That's that little dirt pass that we did there. Or that little, you know, just grunge pass, I guess. So we can leave that in there. We want that to be on top because that's stuff that is, you know, stuck to the shoe over time. So we want that to be on top of our multicam layer, which I'm going to put here in the fill layer. So what I do, what I need to do then is is just drag my multicam image and drop it in here as a texture. And I'm going to import it into this project and do an import. Okay, so there it is there. I'm going to add it to the base color of this fill layer. And immediately you can see that we have our multicam in there. Now it's you know it's a pretty big image, so let's let's see our tiling here. Let's go 0.5. Uh, doesn't look like it's doing a whole actually no, I'm going the wrong way. So let's go bigger than one. Maybe not so big. Let's go two. That's 25, not 2. There we go. Okay, so now we have a seam right there. So what we can do is just maybe offset that. So that it uh, moves the seams out of the way. So that's pretty nice. Um, the only... Oh, let's zoom out here. The only issue is obviously it's kind of shiny and that's because we did not adjust the you know roughness and things like that so let's let's up our roughness a little bit here take that shine off of there we don't need metallic um, and there's no height information on that we're just going to use the height information coming from the layers below so we'll have a roughness and, and, and you know you can turn the roughness off and see what you have I think, yeah, we probably need a little bit of roughness in there just so that it's not this too matte. We want the light to be able to hit. You can see how the light is hitting that looking really good. So just to ratchet up the tacticalness of our boots here, we're going to throw some multicam. If you don't like it full blast color like that, you can always drop down the opacity. If you like to subdue it a little bit, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. All, all the way. Um, it looks like we do have a seam. Now, the other thing you could do is try the triplanar. So, projection right now is UV projection. So, it's just projecting according to the UVs, right? So, it's just laying it in there according to the UVs. Um, and you can see where our seams are falling here. So, if we try the triplanar, hopefully that will, I think we had a seam there that looks like it's now gone. I'm going to hit F4 to go back here, and let's see. Okay, so the back here does not have a, as much detail as I would like. You can grab this and move it around and stuff. Uh, what Triplanar is doing is actually projecting the texture from multiple directions, and then just sort of blurring the edges of the of the uh, image so that you don't get you know visible seams and whatnot. So there we go. We got more detail in the back now. So you can move this around. You can rotate it. You can do whatever you want. Scale it. Um, so if I wanted to rotate it, I could do that. So it's 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 projecting on, on all three axes. And where you'd get seams, it's just putting a blur on that so that you have a nice transition. And that seems to be working pretty well here. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that. I actually like that quite a bit. Just takes it over the top tactical um, which I think is pretty funny okay so that's what I'm gonna do let me just see again see I go back and forth maybe like 80 drop it down to 80 or so let's see yeah let's go down to 80 <laughs> just subdue it a little bit it's too crisp it was a little too crisp and too saturated so 
Just gonna drop that down to 80, and I, I really, I really like that. If you hit tab, you can go full screen, which is cool. And I'm gonna save my file real quick. And once that's done, if it ever gets done, come on. Sometimes it's faster than other times, so who knows. Um, let's give it a second here. Let me see how big my file has gotten at this point. Oh, we're over 4 gigs uh, at this point. So there's the file. It's huge. Okay, so... And part of that is, is probably because I added that multicam image that was pretty high-res image. But... You know, it is what it is. Okay, so let's do a render real quick just to see. Yeah, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Now, I wonder if we should make the tongue. In fact, yeah, I think we will make the tongue. Let's just, let's just, if we're going to do it, let's go all out with it. So, I'm really liking what, we're, what we have here really liking that a lot okay so turn that off turn the render off and you know while we're at it let's go ahead and do the tongue because that white glaring tongue is just kind of ridiculous so um let's let's rename this layer try to rename your layers as much as possible um just like here i fill layer call this i don't know call this grime or something So, like fabric baseball cap is, I believe it was just it was just adding a little bit of roughness and height to it. So that's just the fra fabric texture from the baseball hat preset. So we'll just leave that as is. All right, let's um, close this down. Now the tongues I believe are on 1013. Let's just check. Yeah. Okay. So let's. So this is the brass. This is all the brass things that we have in here. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I did go back in and I smoothed out these. And all you had to do, all I had to do was just go back into the original, uh, into the Maya file, select these, smooth them, um, and then just select everything and re-export. And then just, up, you know, rebake the textures. And you only need to rebake the textures for this one, one the one that, that holds these. Um, and I'm, I'm getting much much nicer results now. So I, I smoothed everything, even these side things here. Okay, so that just affected those, did not affect the rest of the shoe. So all you need to do is rebake the, the, the uh, maps for that UDIM. Okay, so if we look at our UVs, we need our texture for the tongue to just affect these. So what I'm going to do is, again, make a folder... And I got put in there, so I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to close this, and we're going to call this... How do you spell tongues? T-O-N... Does that look right? I don't know. See, now I'm paranoid, so I'm going to look it up. T-O-N-G-U-E. Yep, looks like I got it right. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new fill layer which I'm going to put in that group and I'm going to grab my multicam again and put it in the base color just so that we have that there and I don't know we can do another two and maybe do our triplanar projection again and again don't need any metalness pull up our roughness a little bit okay so now that we have that obviously it has assign that to everything so we need to mask so do a black mask and I'm gonna go I'm just gonna do it here in the UVs I'm gonna hit 4 to enter our tool here this is a tool I like a lot it works so well um, and I'm just gonna drag now it's the it's on polygons set it to UV chunk and just take those two and then hit 1 to get out of that tool and now we have the multicam on the tongues now they're still smooth I would like to keep this sort of cloth like texture in there so for that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to this shoe here and 
no, not that one, this one. And I'm going to get the cloth texture. Um, and in fact, what I can do is just take the entire cloth folder. So right here, I'll close that. Select the cloth folder, control C to copy it, then go to 1013 and paste it. As a matter of fact, what I can actually do, instead of using a whole new folder, I could just use that cloth folder. So I could actually get rid of this. And for this cloth, I just need to clear the mask and then set it again. So let's uh, hit F4 and then hit 4 and make sure when UV chunk, select these two and then hit F4 to go back to the 3D view, hit 1 to get out of that mode. So now, yeah, so this is just the easier way to do it. Just take the whole thing, right? So now we have the texture that we want in there, okay? So that's not bad. You can work with that. Um, you know what, actually... I actually might just go with that and call it good just because, you know, I could put some kind of label on the tongue, et cetera, et cetera. And again, these boots are probably going to be just covered with pants. I haven't decided if I want to blouse the boots or not. I keep going back and forth on it. It's kind of hard to dis to decide here. Um, there we have our multicam here. The grime layer, which I don't know. It's not really doing much, but I'll leave that in there. And then the, the fabric. So I think this is good. I think this is good. You know, if you wanted to really go all out on this, if you were just making boots as a modeling sort of uh, project, you could then put like, you know, the sizing tags and whatnot in here. Um, and maybe some kind of label on here. You know, they, th that's entirely up to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this good. I'm going to call that good. One thing I do want to do is I want to put some kind of logo on here for the boots. Now, I'm not going to use an existing logo. I don't want to steal somebody's uh, copyright there. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use one of the alphas that are in here. I, I'm I'm not willing to put in the time to design my own because it's, it's again, it's not that important. So just to show you what I mean here, um, what I want is leather. I'm going to open up my leather here, and I'm going to put this above the stitching. So, again, fill layer. And actually, no, let's not. Well, let me think here. Let's see. Okay, let's leave it a fill layer. I'm going to make it black. Okay, which obviously then blackens my entire shoe, but I'm going to put a black mask on it. And then, you know... You can just go through the alphas. Let's see this hand here. If I was to use that as my mask. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's not working. Am I in the right? I think I am. So, hmm. <laughs> let me think here. So, I got that in the alpha. And I don't want any of these jitters turned on here. Oh, well, I guess this one doesn't matter. Oh, crap. So, yeah, substance is very customizable. I think I just shrunk my workspace, but that's fine. Let's do that. There we go. Now, um, do I need to invert this? No. It's probably something real simple. No. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't think it's a fill layer that I want. Let's let's go ahead and delete this fill layer. Just make a regular layer. So there's a fill layer and there's a regular, just sort of Photoshop style layer that's just empty. Uh, let's see if it'll work this way. So I don't know. Let's grab that hand again. One of these put it in there and yeah you can paint it on there as a color 
Um, so I'm going to set again my base color to black and I'm going to set my height to the negative so that it cuts it into the surface. You so see, you can see that. There we go. That's what I was trying to get. So that's a pretty good level there. I don't need any metallic. Uh, and then my roughness, you can decide how shiny you want that to be, right? So if I turn my roughness way down, it's going to be real shiny and reflective. And then if I turn my roughness up, it's going to be pretty matte. Um, and you can check the roughness channel. So where's my roughness? So I keep hitting C till we get to roughness. And then you can see what we have there. So if I undo that and increase my roughness, and I can paint while I'm in the roughness uh, channel here. Now that's, you know, that's really rough. So if I hit M, I know that it's not going to be shiny at all. So that's it's a cool way to sort of carve something into the surface. So let's go negative 0.2 right there. And that's how deep it's going to cut into the surface. Okay. So, you know, whatever, you can use anything literally for that logo. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to go through the alphas and see what I like. See something that looks cool. Um, you know, maybe that's kind of interesting. Right, if you want to go with this sort of tactical post-apocalyptic thing, that's kind of a cool one. Do you want to use a radioactive symbol, vent, whatever you wanted that. Um, literally, it could be any of these, or you can make your own. Uh, like I said, I don't want to put that time in, so I'm going to just go through here, see what I like. How about this guy here? That's kind of interesting. I kind of do like that. All right, so yeah, let's go with that. It's kind of cool. Right? And, you know, you don't have to use full-on black if we wanted to go and make, you know, kind of really dark brown maybe. Then we could oops, do that. I don't know. I kind of like black, but... You know, feel free. You want it red, you can have it red. Although it's hard to tell. It's pretty dark red. Let's, let's go up. Yeah, you could have it. Yeah, but that looks horrible. Um, so, you know, decide what you like. I think I like it better black or really close to black. So something like that, so... And then if you want, you can, um, let's see, control and drag up and down on your mouse with the left mouse button will rotate it. So if you need to rotate it, say, to, f to sort of flow that way. That's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. Now I'm having second thoughts about that one. How about this one? That's okay. Da, 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 da. You can tell I'm not the most decisive person. <laughs> Uh, how about the star? Sort of a lawman type motif there. Um, oh, here we go. Here we go. How about how about that Texas Ranger tactical star there? I think my height is too much. Wow, how did I get there? This should be point two or negative point two, I should say. And. You know, something. I want. I kind of want that sort of branded in look. Like they took a hot iron and, and branded that down into the cowhide. I um, think it just adds something to it. Kind of like that star now. Hmm. I don't know what this symbol means, but it's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, that's some pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. There. Oh, it's a recycling thing. Another radioactive, but triangular. You know, all these are pretty cool. What is this? Explosion of some kind. <laughs> Alright, so you know, if you're gonna do it, pick one. Hey, if you wanna if you wanna represent substance, you <laughs> don't do that. Um Alright, I'm gonna pick one here. I think I'm gonna go back to that star. It's kind of because it's kind of obvious, maybe a little too on the nose, but hey, maybe that's kind of funny. So there we go. I go with the star, and let's go to the next UDIM here. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? 
is name this layer we'll call it logo and then I can copy control C bring it here to this layer and again we want this just above the stitching control V now obviously it's not going to be in the correct place um, in fact it's not anywhere let me just uh, check I guess it didn't bring it along or maybe it's just falling somewhere out of the UVs okay that's fine and I'm gonna do the same thing here just put my star close obviously things look a little different from the two different sides here uh, because the lighting is different you know from one side to the other so there we have and it can move the lighting so we can see what we're getting here that's pretty cool I do like that okay so I've just tacticalized my boot even more if that was even possible it is because I have done it so there we go okay so literally you can you can go nuts here you can you can just go crazy if you like um, and make the shoe as insane as you want it to look I do like this though I, I would wear this boot if this if this boot came with this this uh, this color layout I would definitely wear this boot so you know it's entirely up to you make it make it your own like I have done here all right so next laces so the question we got to ask here is how do we want to set these laces up do we want just a, a completely separate material for the lace that's like you know tan colored or something so they're they're bright in contrast or do we want to use the multicam on the laces I don't know so let's uh do, 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 where is my multicam it's under the cloth so this is this it no this is I thought I renamed this oh this is the other shoe oh yeah I did not do the multicam on the other shoe so where, where did I put that multicam Oh, this is the leather. Let's go into the cloth. Multicam is right there. So, yeah, there it is. So, if I control C and then go to this guy here, and I'm going to, this is my grime layer. And I'm going to put the multicam control V right there. And now we have it on this side. So, we're equally tactical on this side as we are on the other. Okay, I keep feeling like this roughness is a little high, so, or a little low, I should say. So I'm going to turn this up. Let's go to 0.6. And then let's go do the same on the other one, because I don't want this to be sh too shiny, because it is sort of cloth. Um, this is why you got to mess with the lighting. Adjust your lighting to see shift, right mouse click and drag. Okay, you don't want to completely decimate that shine, but you don't want it to be too... Let's go points... Really? Point 0.7. There we go. Yeah, I think I like a point 0.7. So I'm going to do the same on this side. So multicam... Oh. Point 0.7, just, just beat that down a little bit. There we go. So, I, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've noticed it's, it's just endless tweaking. Um, and what you have to do is be able to, to say, okay, that's it. And, and stop because you will be at it forever. Okay, so that's our multicam. So I'm going to now copy it again. Control C. And let's go find our laces. Where are, that's the soles. So that's those laces. All right, let's go ahead. Which one was it? That one. 1011 so I haven't done anything there so I'm just going to delete my default layer and paste my multicam in here which might be a little well let's see if we increase our tiling here yeah you know I don't think I like the multicam there so 
let's get rid of that. Um, let's try. Let's try that lighter leather that we have in here that we use for this for the worn leather. So I'm going to copy this, select that, Control C, then go to uh, yep, 2011 and paste that in there. Give it a second. Okay. So, hmm, what if we raised up our brightness? So, levels, base color, and let's just brighten it a little bit. Do we like that? Do we like that? I don't know. Uh, what if we darkened it? Do we want really dark laces? I don't think I like that either. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter. Okay, um, you know, entirely up to you again. Do it the way that you like it. Uh, let's drop our scale here, just so I can get more texture. So if we go to channel here, C, keep hitting C, and we go to normal plus height, we can see that we have some texture there, so they're not just smooth laces. Let's go back to M. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's growing on me, that color. It is growing on me. Uh, what do we have here? I mean, we got masks that don't necessarily work anymore. So, hmm. Let's just remove this mask for a second so we don't have the mask anymore. And let's, yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm going back and forth on whether I like this lighter, a little bit darker. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to take this layer control D to duplicate it and then I'm going to lower this one I'm going to make this one really kind of dark and let's throw a let's throw a smart mask on there see if we can just break up the evenness of the color a little bit so scroll down to smart masks and I don't know find one that let's try dirt splashes Nah, not so much. How about dirt spots? You know, this one might be all right. Let's adjust the mask a little bit. So if you go in the mask editor, um, you can mess with the texture here. That one doesn't do too much. Huh, these aren't really doing a whole lot here. So just start pushing and pulling on uh, sliders. See what happens. Oh, here we go. That's kind of cool there. Um, micro details. Eh. No, let's uh, not mess with that. If we invert it. Okay. So, and then there's a clouds over the top of it. Um, you know. It's kind of interesting. Then again, just to fill the nooks and crannies with a little bit of dirt, let's go to materials. And I'm going to come down here, get my rust coarse, put it above, and put a black mask on it. Put a generator, and do a dirt. And let's drop down the dirt level. Let me turn this on and off to see what we're doing. I don't know if it's really worth it. Maybe if I darken my rust color a little bit. Yeah, that's doing so little. Um, let's increase the dirt. And turn this on and off. Yeah, you know what? That's kind of okay. Let's 
let's just drop the opacity of this layer down a little bit. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Call it good. Okay, so I'm guessing, yep, this is these guys. So what I'm going to do is if we just select all of these, I'm just holding control as I click on each one and hit control G, it's just going to group them into a folder. Okay, and we just call this laces and... Okay, and that way I can just copy this, control C, go into this one, delete that default layer, control V to paste in the laces and give it a second to, to think here. And there we go. Okay, so now we have laces. I'm just gonna look to make sure it's not the exact same texture. It's not, it's getting different parts of the texture. Okay, so our boots are coming along very nicely, I think, anyway. Um, let me save here real quick. Okay, so at this point, really, all we got to do now is our soles. And... So let's let's go with that. All right. So um, now for the soles, what I do want to do, and if you remember way back when we created normal maps in Maya for the sole, we just had the one shoe. But I have since you know adjusted the UV. So now there's two soles on one UV map. Before there was just one. So th that old normal map is not going to work. So I want to go back in and regenerate in Maya from the scan. So project details from the scan back on here because it, the soles look much nicer with that normal map on there. The, the tread and everything looks a lot crisper, a lot tighter. So I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it for both shoes at once. So I'm going to duplicate the scan to the other side so that we can do that. Okay, so we will jump into Maya to do that and go from there. <clears throat> 